morning everyone, we're going to be doing a, a project that's a bit different from normal. Um, we're taking inspiration from life drawing, so I've got my life drawing model here. Hopefully you've received your set of images, if not give me a call. Um, I've also got a charcoal pencil and a charcoal stick. A range of brushes from fine to large for my two acrylics, which I've got black and white. Now it can be any black and any white you want, it really doesn't matter, whatever gives you the coverage. You'll also need a water pot, a palette and probably a tissue to wipe your brushes in between just to help with cross contamination. The main issue you do need here, and you can see already I've managed to smear some yellow paint on it, which is not going to be a problem, I will paint that out in a little while, um, is some thick cartridge paper. This is 240 GSM, it's medium surface texture which is quite nice for this type of project. So, let's get on with things, shall we? Because time, as always, is off the essence. Right, so to start off with, we've got to get a really good drawing. That means that you're going to need to pay attention and be very careful. Already, if you look at all the images, they're generally of a whole model. This picture is set up for doing a selection of the model, not the whole model. Already you can see that this is a rectangle where the model is set within a square. So I need to cut this down rather than change the aspect ratio. And I need to zoom into the area that I think is most interesting. You can do this different ways. You can cut out a rectangle, move it around the image, see which one lines up the best. You could wing it if you want to. Or you can get bits of paper and put it around the edge. My personal favourite is usually to fold my image and that's why I like having a, a hard copy image when I'm doing things like this because it's more flexible for you to play around with. Oh, I'm going to go for this one and whatever we've got down the side we're going to double. Right, so I'm going to go for, and I'm just working by eye which you can do if you want to. That selection, I reckon that'll look quite nice. Uh, if I want to check the aspect ratio, I can put it in this bottom left hand corner, run a ruler through, and you can see I'm just off by about an inch at the top, maybe half an inch, so that should be absolutely fine. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to start with my charcoal pencil. So I'm doing my standard kind of getting the big areas in first, which is always ideal when life drawing. Here you can see it's going to be the torso area. So I'm going to roughly plot this in, oh, I am looking kind of halfway down, halfway down my paper, around there, I know that the bust line is going to be slightly lower, going uphill, then I've got this section here coming here, I've got the arm coming down here, and I've got to get these shards in with the head going to be sitting in here and I'm going to have this arm coming off the side of my paper down here. So you can see how I'm holding the end of the pencil and I'm just roughly getting the shapes in. It's not going to be perfect at this stage because you're just doing it by eye and you're starting to work up areas but it will come. That's only button over here. Let's see the material over there. Okay. 
Okay, so you should get something like that. So it's very rough, but it's starting to come together because it's a human, that's so always good. Then as soon as you're happy with that, you'll probably want to take your hand and start sliding it down the pencil to form much more of an accurate illustration. Like I always say, don't be worried if you've done any errors, correct them. I feel like you should have been getting it perfect at this stage. You won't be, it's only natural. Okay, so it should end up with a life drawing like this, okay? Now, hopefully if all's going to plan, you've got a, a decent proportioned picture. Um, if you want to, you could always get your stick as well and work up a little bit more detail. If you fancy putting in a little bit more of a, a 
tonal observation it can be handy when we move on to the next stage so, do take your time and get the drawing that you're happy with Right, so you should be able to get something like this. Now at this stage is where you want to look at moving into your acrylics. So I've got my palette there and I've got my brushes. And I've got my paints. Right, so I'm going to get some black paint. You won't need a huge amount of black paint so don't pour out that much. You're probably more likely to get through the white paint and need more of that. Then I'm going to take my brushes and I'm going to start working my white first. So I'm going to go for a smaller brush. It goes over there. Keeping an eye on here. Now, when I put this paint on top of the charcoal, you'll see that I will start getting cross contamination straight away. That means that you need to be using your brushes to wrap around the edge and to really show up the contours. If you add more white in, it will gradually get rid of it, but you want to use it. This is why you put in that tonal work at this stage. And then 
remember where you've got to keep your really strong highlights though, because she's got this very strong highlight up here on the right hand shoulder. Okay. So stop working in that shadow area. The cross contamination completely on purpose. And smoothing it out if you want to into some white highlight. You can always grab a little bit of water on your brush and dilute your paint down if you're finding it a little bit too harsh. Go over any areas that you want grey and you've ended up getting rid of the grey as you can see here I haven't quite got the shadow then mix up a little bit of a grey tone using your black and your white and start adding it in So don't feel like you have to completely work over the top of all your charcoal. You might want to leave areas of charcoal, for instance with the really strong dark shadows, or just to emphasise the basic shape and structure of the body that you've been playing around with for this art exercise. Right, so you should be getting something like this. At this stage you do want to make sure that you're also filling in the background because you can see all these construction lines. I'm going to just take white and take out that background shape. which will be much easier for starting to plot in some of the detail. Now some people like to leave it like this, it's completely up to you where you want to go with this. Just stop at the stage that you, you quite like the artwork. You can work it up to a much deeper detailed level or you know you can leave it and have it as a very loose quick study. I'm going to come in and give her an eye, I'm a little bit too wet.
you should end up with something that looks like this if all's going well. Have a play around with it, get a feel for the cross contamination that you can create on purpose by mixing the white paint into the charcoal and you'll usually find that the first time you're doing it's kind of tough and then after a while you'll get used to the technique, you'll build confidence and experience and it will become much more intuitive and natural. Hopefully you've had lots of fun, you've got some ideas to build up on and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone!